Hello builders, this is Brad from Red Collector, and uh, as you read from the title, today we're going to talk about Pokemon reprints. So what we're going to talk about today is how I keep hearing people talking about reprints. They're concerned about reprints, especially for Scarlet and Violet, which is partially why you're looking at a full DIY Evolve booster box chart. We're going to go into it in just a second. We're going to take a look at some numbers using the bot. We're going to look, take a look at some assumption as well as one I think it's just genius thought that I had today while I was doing my usual session of um, algebraic topology. You can imagine how much of a good time I had doing that. So seriously though, um, I mean, I did do all the things I mentioned, but seriously, what we're gonna talk about is how I, I hear it and basically read it, not hear it uh, on, on my Discord. I see it and hear it on other people's channels, other bigger PokeTuber than, than obviously I am, and uh, they're all talking about reprints. Now, I understand the fact that you're worried a reprint could crash the market. Uh, I had one of the members on the channel showing me a chart of a of Roaring Skies back in, uh, I think it was 2016, when it got massively reprinted, and uh, it, it, it was about $100, and then it crashed down to 80. I mean, and we've seen what, what happened with um, most recent history with Sword and Shield, with Full Storage and Tempest, and then uh, obviously the, the we all know what happened with Evil Skies, Fusion Strike, and Shin and Rain, where nobody wanted it. Now, there's two main things I want to talk about. Number one, should you be worried about reprint? Number two, I'll keep it as a secret, and, and uh, I'll, I'll leave you the, the link, the chapter, the timestamp, on the video if you want to go go hear it but i think it's 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 a really interesting point that i came up with today so should you wor be worried about a reprint well if you worry about something that is out of your control which is when you're investing you can do your your due diligence and this doesn't apply only to the Pokemon market if you buy a stock if you buy a bond uh, there, there's always risk uh, bonds are usually called risk-free assets and though technically they're not risk, there's a credit risk, default risk, which is basically the what they're paying you. It's also calculated on different things, such as default risk, which is higher for companies or corporate bonds, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But that's not important. What is important, everything has risk. Some things, some assets have higher risks to Pokemon, some others have lower risk, historically. Now, you could open a whole different branch and go talk about historical performance, the estimators you use, because everyone talks about how a Pokemon has been forming like this, if you look at past history, but it's been forming, you know, it's it has those numbers, uh, CAGR, so compound annual growth rate, blah, blah, so on and so forth, on average, blah, blah. You could, you know, being a mathematician myself, you could go on and ask, okay, but well, what estimators did you use? Did you use a simple mean? Uh, what kind of estimate is it is it robust there's so many things you can talk about really and so that's why i i always talk about so many things in my videos but uh, i end up almost saying nothing because i have t too many ideas in my head forgive me so what i'm saying is that aside once you know you're into risky asset which is risky by definition doesn't mean it's the riskiest it means it's risky it has a risk that's the definition of being risky you're aware that there are external exogenous factors such as reprints you can you can pr assume you can predict what i mean by that is you can assume that poldi evolved for instance is going to get a reprint but you don't know if someone tells you they know unless they've had confirm let's call them rumors confirmed news from distributors or the pokemon company but i mean distributors they, nobody knows so you can assume you get reprint, but in your investing plan, your investing journey, if you buy a box, so I bought this PE box for 90 euros, which is what I offer to all my members on the Discord for um, newer sets in the U, 90 euros a box. So far, I've been able to fulfill all the orders. So. I bought this super minty, so it's not damaged or anything. I bought it for 90 euros. If you're in the US, I know you can easily get, you could have gotten this 
back in the days for $90 easily. Probably less than that, 85, 80. I don't know about 80, but 85 to 90, I'm sure, US dollars in the US. I'm pretty sure. Now, historically, since many people like to take a look at historical data, which is basically what we part of the reason why we invest is based on historical data. And then obviously historical data is not going to guarantee. Hopefully you know that. We should know that. And then there's the, let's say, future prediction component. So you, you ask yourself, is this box going to be 2x the price I paid it in Y amount of years? If the answer is yes, and then you have different criteria on your trading plan journey, then you should ask yourself, am I okay buying this at 90 euros, $90 knowing I get a reprint? Now, what you could do, look at historical data, have booster boxes gone below $90? Yes. Have modern booster boxes gone below $90? Yes. How much lower? Go look at the data, but how much higher have they gone? Are they gonna, from $90, before a reprint, can they go higher? Yes or no? Can they go lower? Yes or no? You ask yourself those questions, you come up with your own risk aversion, and you get yourself an answer. Now, that's basically what I have to say to all the people that ask me, okay, but Polyvol could get a reprint. Yes, he can. I bought it at 90 euros. I'm fine. I can tolerate the risk buying it at 90 euros before a reprint, and then potentially six months from now, three months from now, getting a reprint. Do I see it going below any euros? It's possible. Am I okay with it? Yes. Therefore, I bought it. Now, connecting this is the second point I want to talk about. Is do you think the price of I'm looking at PE, so I'm gonna stick to a PE. Do you think the, the price of a booster box that hasn't been reprinted yet factors in a potential reprint? What I mean by that? There's a whole theory on uh, the stock market specifically about pricing. Um, there's a um, there's whole basically field that likes to price financial instruments. You probably heard about cash flow valuation, the cash flow model, dividend discount model. You probably heard about those models. Those are some models to evaluate, calculate price. Perhaps is the best word, the price of a stock. So you price on financial assets. Now, if you want to go into more specific, there's the Merton Scholz formula for it was that got a Nobel in economics. I think it was 1981 or 1980, which is basically the equation for heat. I'm not going to go into it. I'll just say it's the equation for heat. Um, could be come much more into it that a price a option european style blah 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 blah. i'm not going to go into it so there's a whole branch there's a whole field that likes to price things now considering the question is considering this box get a reprint and today this box in the us is 130 dollars it's about 115 euros 120 euros in the european union does that 130 dollars 120 euros include in the price, the fact that it could get a reprint? I think the answer is yes. Why? To some degree, the market is efficient. What does it mean? It means that every information available to the public is ready priced into the price of that asset. Paul Dia evolved booster box in this example. So public information is ready priced in. What does it mean? Nobody knows if it's going to get a reprint. The market, so everyone that participates in this market is aware that it could get a reprint. And in being aware, they decide whether to buy it or not. When you make a decision on buy it or whether you want to buy it or not, if you buy it, you're taking supply out of the market. It shows demand, obviously, and it keeps price either, that's, you know, could be much more complicated than that. It it keeps price either steady or it increases price, which is what happens, right? Everyone buys, price goes up. Nobody buys, price either stays flat or goes down. Right, that's 
basic, my, uh, basic uh, microeconomics, right? So if what I'm saying is, I hope it's clear. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with me. If you don't, the fact that you don't know, nobody knows if you're gonna get a reprint, but you can assume it will. You can attribute a personal probability. Let's say, okay, I think there's a 50-50 chance it's gonna get a reprint. Do I buy it or not? When you make that decision, you are part of the market, you are pricing that asset. I hope you get what I'm saying. So again, my answer is yes. If people buy this at 130, they're fine with buying at 130. So they are pricing the fact that it could get a reprint, they're fine with it, they're buying it. Those the people that are buying 130, they're aware that it could get a reprint, they don't buy 130. So they're pricing into the market that it's get a reprint and they're pricing 130. If those people didn't buy, if they would buy, so if, if they're not buying because of the reprint, if they would buy, no matter the reprint, so no matter the fact that you get a reprint or not, if they would change their mind and they would buy, at that point the price would go higher because you have people who are not willing to buy right now that let's say tomorrow, they're willing to buy. I I'm saying tomorrow just to get, you know, T equals zero, T equal one. It, it could be six months, I don't know. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you don't buy today, but you buy tomorrow, the fact that you're buying tomorrow is going to increase the price. If everyone else that is buying today is also buying tomorrow. Hope you get what I'm saying. That's how the market works. That's how I keep on working because that's how it works. Now, that being said, I'm very curious to know what you guys think. Do you think their prints are already priced in the model? Are you afraid of them? Or are you happy when they come so you can get your hands on product for cheaper than it was? And last but not least, if you made it this far, I want to announce that I will be making a Q&A video. So if you have any questions for me, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them in the Q&A video. And obviously, if you want to stay updated, I would highly recommend if you subscribe. If you enjoyed the video as well, I would also appreciate if you could leave a like. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. And I'll see you in the next one.